Welcome back to Just Blades of Programming. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, cascading parameters. So cascading parameters is a concept that I find to be easier if you learn through uh, the actual high level illustration before we get into the code because I did it the reverse and it was honestly a little confusing for me that might be you know showing off my IQ a little bit but I feel that it is much easier to understand this if you see it illustrated like this and not only that but we get a little bit of a preview as to what's going to be my next uh, video when it comes to the actual programming stuff so today we're just going to be learning a, at a high level cascading parameters so don't feel bad if you don't understand I got confused myself and uh, you know it is what it is. So at a high level, cascading parameters is basically the blazer's way of passing values between components. So you have one component and you have a value, right? So we need to pass this value within components because you can have nested components within each other. So you have your parent component and you have a child component or you have multiple uh, links of this. So somehow you will need to pass in information sometimes uh, within components because you don't want to keep digging up the, the this value over and over again because uh, one component needs, like, say, an address, and then this other component needs that same address. You don't want to keep, and then the next component after that needs the address for whatever reason or something else, doesn't matter. Um, that could get pretty hectic, especially if there's a giant chain of them going on. So this is how Blazor um, copes with it, using cascading parameters. You pass the values along the components. So we're just going to show off a quick illustration here. So we have uh, component A here. And we're going to have nested component B, There's another guy, and then nested component C. So they're all, they're all familiar with each other because this is going to be our ancestor. This is going to be our parent. This is going to be the child. So within the code, they're going to be within each other. But we need to pass this value along. So let's say you start off with this parent and now we have this value. So we go from parent or from ancestor to parent and from parent to child. Now, it really doesn't matter uh, whether or not the parent needs it. You just you do need to um, assign a cascading parameter in order for it to reach the child at some point, because um, this person might not care or understand what's happening to them. But let's say the child does care. And they have to be considerate because if they don't, then the child will never ever know what exactly the ancestor was trying to give them in this sense value. So whenever you do this, there's actually two ways of doing it within Blazor. You can have it done either by type, which is, we're doing it here, or let's make another one. Make another version of this. by name. Now, the reason why you have these different uh, versions of doing it because um, by name basically locks in what the name of your parameter is going to be. And sometimes that's useful in some cases. Um, it's most useful when working with primitives. So what I'm talking about is that when you have, let's say, a value, let's pretend that in this case, for our, we have, uh, for our intents and purposes, the parent is passing in a boolean of is raining. So they have a boolean of this, and this ancestor is the one that has it right now. And we need to pass it along to the child, make sure the child knows whether or not it's raining, because they don't know. So when that happens, bool is raining is of a value type in our example. And in order to denote that, you need to add something on top of, the, of this value. So in your code, you have something like this. Uh, I can't really move it to put it here, but... I can a little bit, All right, whatever. You're going to have this on top of this, and then it will pass it along as whatever the bool is. It doesn't really care for, for whatever the, um, uh, whatever the name is. So you could actually call these different names and it will still receive this value. The trick is what, um, uh, the trick is in what order does it come from? So let's say this guy has the is bool. And you didn't do well. Oh, the this one, it's raining, and you forget to call it something else. So you call it just raining, 
Like, is it raining? And then this guy has the name is raining because you've remembered it. But Blazer is smart enough to know that if they're all the same value type, it's going to get whatever the nearest one is. So is raining, we'll get it from, I spell it wrong. We'll get it from um, the parent, and the parent will get it from the ancestor, depending on the type. So whatever this type is going to be filled by as long as it has the cascading parameter on top of it. But that is just one way of doing it. So that doesn't work for all cases. In fact, it's not very good when it comes to um, to primitives, because obviously you can have many primitives, but you can have multiple parameters passing in through. So when it comes to something a little bit more complex, you might be able to get away with it because the signatures of those objects will be different. However, when it comes to something that's uh, simplistic, you might want to use something a little bit different. That is the naming uh, parameters. Let's say we have the same thing, but this time we're going to use the name. Oh, wait, oops. Let's change the color here. So now we have uh, the parameter name is ring. So now the name is actually be taken into consideration. So when it comes down from the ancestor to the child and from the child, I mean, from the parent to the child, we know exactly what they're receiving, what value they are getting each from the ancestor to the parent to the child. And that's really all there is to cascading parameters. All you have to do is make sure that you have this attribute on top of whatever the parameter or whatever the uh, value trying to pass through is, and that each one of them has it, because then it will be passed through. And depending on whether or not you need a type or a name, you might need to change this a little bit and ensure that um, basically if it's a primitive to maybe use the name because you can have multiple primitives that are the same you know, type. But if you don't, if you have a more complex type or more complex object, then you might be able to get away with just writing it as the normal way, which is just doing um, this. I'll just put it there. And that's all there is to it. Cascading parameters are actually pretty simple. Uh, when you do it in code, there might be some more um, things to consider, but this is the high level process of what a cascading parameter how cascading parameters work in blazer so i hope that this clears it up a little bit and make sure to drink plenty of h2o and i'll see you later on the actual programming video uh thank you very much see ya remember um i have eight years of experience doing all this or nine years or whatever at this point so this is the best i can do